Oh, this is a great one. The dinosaurs, man. They're out there. You young guys, you read a code book, you get information, you get all excited, you go to the job site, you tell, try to tell somebody in there, and they try to make you feel like a total, complete idiot. Listen, I understand that most guys, most people in the trade, and I don't know about ladies, I, I, we're getting, at the last, my seminars that I'm doing now, engineering, because I do a lot of engineering seminars, it's getting to be about 8 or 10% of the ladies in my engineering seminars, 10, 8 or 10%. Are women and that is cool electricians apprenticeship programs a lot more ladies are in apprenticeship programs and I love it these guys these ladies I'm sure are just smoking all the guys just education they're studying doing everything and then of course they're getting all kinds of crap ladies you get a bunch of crap from guys on the job site don't take it personal they give everybody a bunch of crap <laughs> okay maybe actually you a little less than they would another guy so you have the dinosaurs, and as you're learning, don't worry about these guys. They're going to be gone one day. So let's talk about anti-share bushings for MC cable. Mike, is the red plastic bushing supplied with the MC cable required to be installed? I was told by an experienced co-worker that it's not required by either the product standard or the code. Of course not. It's not required. Here we go. So Mike, what's the deal about anti-share bushings? Well, Armor cable, they make fittings for armor cable. And armor cable, I'm sure, came out before BX, came out before MC cable. So they had whatever kind of fittings they had, they required a plastic bushing. It doesn't have to be red, but I think it's only red. And what you do is you take this 18 gauge aluminum bonding strip for armor cable and you cut it off. Some guys are like, well, you know, you put the anti-share bushing in there and then you kind of wrap it around the side there and, or you bring it out and you make it just cut the thing off. And if you want to see when you wrap that 18 gauge around there and then you put that in the fitting, that fitting was never designed to have some 18 gauge wire wrapped all around the end of the fitting. It was designed that you cut that off right there. You can see that 18 gauge is a bonding jumper and it bonds this steel convolution right to that one. That's all it does. And then it goes and the other one bonds that one to that. So what that does is it makes the sheath of armor cable to be listed as an equipment grounding conductor. And that's 251, 18, I wanna say nine, maybe somewhere in there. So now that's a purpose of wire. Cut it off, take the anti-short bushing, stick it in there. And here's what it said. This is 320.40. Here's what it tells you. An insulating anti-short bushing must be installed in all type AC cable terminations. The termination fitting must permit the visual inspection of the anti-short bushing once the cable has been installed. So you have to use a fitting, which is 110.15. You have to use a fitting specifically listed for armor cable so that you can look in there and you can see the anti-short bushing. So that is required for armor cable. MC cable requires a totally different fitting and it does not require any kind of visualization to see if the anti-ship bushing is there. If you look at an MC cable fitting, if you're actually getting MC cable fittings when you're running MC cable, not a story. But if you get them, you'll notice when you look inside there that there's like a, a stopper, a little ring stopper in there and the conductors kind of go within the ring stopper. And so therefore, there is no requirement for an anti-short bushing for MC cable because it is a different fitting. It is a different type of construction. So the answer is no. Well, I don't mind, but how do I prove that? Okay, fine. You want proof? This has been around since 2002. But the dinosaurs, oh, I don't care about that kind of crap. You got to do this. I'm like, oh my gosh. The, the, does people actually stop learning and think they they actually believe that they know everything there is ever to learn? So when you see somebody who's not willing to hear you out and to, to learn new things, realize the person actually already learned everything there is in life and they can't possibly learn anything else. Seriously. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the bulletin. The use of anti-short bushings for terminating type MC cable. I'm going to read the text. I don't normally do this, but I want to read this one. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I have the text here. There we go. So the text is there, but I kind of stuck it in here. 
There has been much confusion within the insulation and inspection communities regarding the use of anti-short bushings and terminations type MC cable. The confusion stems from the fact that some MC cable manufacturers include anti-short bushings with the cable. Mike, yet don't yet see the anti-short bushing came with the cable. Yet think they're not required. Give me a break, Mike. So, so you say, well, if they're not required, Mike, then why are the manufacturers including them in there? You know why? Because got people think they have to be put in there, and so they yell and scream at the manufacturers. Well, you didn't include the anti-short bushing to the MC cable. So like, okay, we'll try to be nice guys. We'll include some anti-short bushing because they're not code experts. They include the anti-short bushings with the MC cable. And then people actually think you have to do it. So a guy who actually reads the code, reads NEMA bulletins, knows what's going on, is feeling pretty good, goes out there, doesn't put anti-short bushings, take those suckers, pitches them away. Because you realize something, the fitting for MC cable was never designed to be using anti-short bushing so probably if you put an anti-short bushing i would say you're violating the code because 110.3b says you have to install it according to the instructions the instructions don't include anti-short bushings and mc cable let's go back to the text the confusion stems from the fact that some mc cable manufacturers include anti-short bushings with their cable they're trying to be nice guys and they're just shooting themselves in the foot the inclusion of anti-short bushings with coils or reels of mc cable is based on historical practice Again, yeah, dinosaur. Fittings used for type MC cable are required to be listed per 330.40. Hmm. What was the rule of arm cable? Oh, look at that. 320.40 was the anti short bushing rule. 330.40 is similar rule, except it's talking about the fittings. The design of these fittings are required to be provided with a smooth, rounded end stop so that the metal sheet of the cable will not pass through and the wires will not be damaged in passing over the ends of the stop. It's a special fitting. That's why you don't have anti-short bushings. What you don't want to use is use an MC cable, put anti-short bushings on a fitting that's not listed for MC cable. You're just screwing everything up. Next one. These listed MC fittings, you have to use listed MC fittings for MC cable. Do not require an additional anti-short bushing. Anti-short bushings that may be supplied by the MC cable are an option used by the installer. However, they are not required. Let me go back here. Let me get that video and snag that sucker. But let me give you information. That's a NEMA bulletin number 90, August 14, 2002, reaffirmed December 11, 2014. But you know what? There's people out there like, I don't care. I don't care about that crap. And Mike Bolt, you know, that guy is just, I don't know. He's just a troublemaker. Probably true.